Summer Back in Dune, the sci-fi blockbuster action franchise for audiences who think they're above sci-fi action blockbuster franchises. Jam-packed with more night fights and omnipresent allusions to fundamentalist Islam than your least favorite uncle's Facebook timeline. And now having dispensed with several appendices worth of who is everybody, what is everything, and what the hell exactly are we doing here's worth of exposition for the better half of part one, they can jump just directly into all action almost all the time mode in part two with so much pew pew they even went and got Florence Pugh here not just to steal Zendaya's man, but also her function from the first movie as major actress of note who will just keep showing up and not really doing anything other than signal that she'll be important in the next one. Now if you have uh, forgotten from the last time, it has been two years and a question of whether or not we were going to do another movie at all in those intervening years. The gist of things are the internecine geopolitics of a space empire being fought over control of space spice, which is actually space meth which is the only way to get space high enough to do space travel. Twist number one to all of this is that the space meth can only be space mined on an inhospitable space desert planet inhabited by giant space worms and an indigenous population of space metaphors for colonial space oppression who all the other space people fight over control of who gets to do space oppression of. Twist number two is that the real political machinations are being conducted by a centuries old order of scheming space nuns who manipulate everyone using mind control powers and propagandize false messiahs and fake religions they largely nudge into place themselves via hands-on space eugenics. One such progeny being our protagonist, Timothy Knight Shyamalan, as Paolo Atreyu, who having survived the massacre of his family alongside his mom, has joined up with Zendaya as Michi and her community of indigenous dune rebels to wage guerrilla warfare against their common enemy, the Harkonnen, rulers of the kinky German expressionist planet, and also because the rebels think he's their messiah because his mom is a space nun and she said so. And let's face it, if you're casting someone whose chosen one origin story is, I'm the chosen one, I have a note from my mommy, this is definitely the actor you want. Look guys, I mostly dug the first one, I actually like this one better, it's good, yeah, but it's also a Denis Villeneuve movie, the only sense of humor you're going to be getting, I have to bring. But yeah, I had a good time. For decades, everybody basically said Dune was unfilmable and it basically is. Yeah, we've basically had to split the difference between two different versions. You got the David Lynch one that nailed the psychedelia, but had to lose the prospect of making any damn sense. And now we have these ones, which make sense to a fault, but kind of ignore the psychedelia part in favor of doing a more straightforward narrative. I like this one better than the first one. It works as more of a straightforward, propulsive war movie with a birth of a false cult religion net subplot than the first one did as a world building info dump with knife fights in the third act. Your mileage may vary on that, but I think that this is more of a solid working premise overall. I think Timmy Knight Shyamalan, who I know I tease at a lot, I still don't totally get the appeal overall, but he really works here for what he's given to do. He is good casting for this character as he comes into his own as someone who kind of keeps saying that he doesn't want any part of the role that he's being pushed into but as soon as we have to get up to this point of oh but you kind of do don't you dude really sells the premise and Zendaya has the slightly more difficult part where she's a POV character but from outside of the character whom we're getting the actual point of view of it's a difficult angle and needle they're trying to thread but it works and overall, getting outside of all of the different houses, warring factions, stuff that most other stories take care of in a title crawl business that was so much of the first movie, and mostly making this one a centrally focused propulsive action narrative, largely focused on two characters with cutaways to the machinations of the main bad guys and the buildup of the religious cult in the background is a much more interesting, straightforward narrative. And if you are going to cut back on as much of the inner monologue and the psychedelia and the internal head trip stuff as they have, that's probably the way to go. It just works better, that works better for me. Something that doesn't totally work is that putting more focus into what world building we do get on the space nuns as the actual main players of the world building is a good idea, that makes sense, but they also want to keep them in the background and not really actually develop them as characters and make them these mysterious, like, wraith-like background figures wandering around 
doesn't fully work. I feel like they should have picked a lane on that one and they really don't. Maybe that's coming in the next one. We shall see. We get a lot more of Harkonnen Planet in this one. That looks great. Austin Butler, sorry man, you're no sting. But uh, then again, who is? Overall, I think this works better than the first one. I liked it. Gonna call this one a uh, 7 out of 10. Check it out. I hope they make number 3.